Hey everyone, welcome back for another video. My name is Tanya, for those of you that are new here, and I'm a watercolor and acrylic artist. So for the last couple of years, I've been really into doing little watercolor landscapes, really whimsical, colorful little landscapes. And so far, I think you've been enjoying them. So I'm gonna do another video today. Hope you like it. Okay, so I've got my Arches watercolor paper. I've got my Winsor Newton watercolors, and I've got some of my Princeton brushes here. I'll let you know what size I'm using as I'm going along. All right, so first what I wanna do is I'm gonna take a watercolor pencil. I have Prismacolor watercolor pencils here. You can use any kind of watercolor pencil you want, or you can even use just a regular, um, a regular pencil, but then just make sure your lines are really light because once you put the watercolor over the pencil, it will still show through and you won't be able to erase it once the watercolor is there. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and use a watercolor pencil. And you can start making your, um, your hills any shape you want. I'm just gonna do some round, nice round ones right here in the front. And then I'm gonna do another one coming up this way. And the color I'm using right now is violet um, because I'm gonna be using a lot of cool colors in this landscape, but you can use any color you want so you don't have to follow along with what I'm doing. And I'm gonna put another hill here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get my, one of my hills wet here with just water. I'm using a 10 round. I'm just gonna go ahead and apply just plain water. And you don't wanna get it too saturated because then your water is just not gonna move as easily. Um, but you do want it nice and damp. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull off some of the water that I had just put on. Just make sure it's an even coat. You don't want any puddling anywhere. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a violet. And I'm gonna make it, I think, a little bit darker towards the bottom. You can do your, um, your values of colors. You can do them uh, dark more in the foreground. You could do it dark in the, um, more on the background of each hill. It just depends, whatever, whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna pull in a little bit more violet here in the front. Make sure I get a nice even coat. And then I think I'm actually even gonna be pulling in a little bit of blue just to give it a little bit of a deeper value here. And I think I'm gonna to stick to just cool colors on this painting. All right, look how beautifully that's blending. Um, Arches watercolor paper just blends beautifully. If you don't have Arches watercolor paper, go ahead and use whatever kind of paper you've got. Um, it's just that the 100% cotton papers just blend a little bit better. All right, I'm gonna skip this hill and this hill for right now because I want this to dry a little bit, otherwise it's gonna bleed into each other. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wet this one. And today is such a beautiful day. I have my doors and windows open. So my dogs are outside. Well, most of them. One of them's still sitting here next to me. Um, so you will hear them playing in the yard back there. All right, I think I'm gonna be pulling in just another shade. I think this one here is more, more of a violet. There. I just want a nice, even tone on this hill for right now. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put in some shadows and stuff. All right, um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and do that now while I'm still waiting for these two to dry. All right, I will pull in a little bit of my turquoise. All right, bring that up. Okay, so normally what I would do is just wait for this to dry naturally, but um, because we're I'm videotaping this today, I'm gonna go ahead and just um, take the heat gun to this really quick. Okay, so I went ahead and dried that, and I'm gonna start um, doing these two hills now. So here again, I'm gonna apply some water. I think I want these two to be a darker blue. So maybe I'll pick up my ultramarine. Now the ultramarine doesn't blend as nicely as some of the other colors do. 
Um, for some reason, it just, it's a little bit more um, granulating. It just doesn't, it just doesn't blend as nice. You can, but, it, but I do want texture on these hills. So it, I, I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. But if you do mind it, just stay away from maybe the ultramarine. I'm going to go ahead and put in a little bit more. This one here was a different blue. I'll pull it up. Now, if those hills on the sides were wet, it would be um, bleeding right into that, but I dried them pretty good. All right. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do my sky right now since this one's wet. I don't want to go ahead and do this one yet. So I'm going to go ahead and wet my sky there. And I'm using a, what is this, a 5 eighths angle brush. Just because my sky's got a little bit more area to it. I'm going to be careful and try and go around my hills. And I think I want to do more of a pink sky. And once this dries, I'm gonna go ahead and deepen up the top part of the sky. So right now I'm going to use my heat gun once again so I could do my final, um, my final hill. Okay, so this hill here is still a little bit wet. I can see that there's still a little bit of a shine to it. So that means it's still a little bit wet, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this hill. And then I think I'm gonna add a couple more layers to the others. I'm gonna move back down to my size 10. And I'm going to pull in a different blue. I'm going to do turquoise on this one. Go right up to my sky. Right up to the other hills. And it's okay if you overlap them a little bit. You're just going to get a little bit of a different color. Like, see here, I overlapped. So it's giving me a little bit of a different blue. And here I overlapped. It's giving me more of a purple color um, because blue and red make purple. So it's giving me a little bit more of a purple color. If you don't like that, just be really careful um, when you're bumping up your colors to one another. But I don't mind it. I think it just gives an extra little, extra little interest to the painting. All right. Pull some of that pigment down. All right, I don't wanna play around with it too much. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and deepen up some of the purples on here, even though that one is still wet. Um, I think I'm gonna do um, a dry, a wet on dry, just cause I don't want it to bleed too much with that. And just make sure your edge is wet just keep a wet edge otherwise it's going to dry with a line right there now i'm just going in with some just some water and i'm going to bleed bleed that up up the hill there that's really pretty all right i am going to do the same thing to this top hill that kind of lost some of its color up here. I'm not, I'm not sure I'm liking the way that purple kind of dried right there. Oops. Um, it's just kind of fading a little bit and I don't like that. So I will go ahead and you know what? Maybe I'll make it a nice pink. Kind of to match the sky. You know what? No, I'm gonna stick with the blues. I'm gonna stick with the purple. So I'm gonna try and not bump up to that blue hill because it is still damp. But I wanna do this kind of quickly, otherwise I'm gonna get a harsh line there and I don't want a harsh line. I 
I can't believe we're February and I've got my windows open and my doors open. My sliding glass door is open right now. I can't believe it's February and we're enjoying this beautiful weather, but I'm not gonna complain. All right, um, let's see. I think I'm gonna go ahead and deepen up the blue on this one now. So you can go ahead and make as many layers as you want. All right, and I'm gonna deepen up a little bit of this turquoise too. And then just with some water, I'm going to bring it up. There. All right. Let's see. Yep, my sky's pretty dry. So I'm going to go over again with another little bit of pinkish red. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and dry this really quick. Okay, <clears throat> so some of my blues are still a little wet. I'm gonna go over and deepen up my purples on these. So like I said before, you can go in and just keep deepening up any colors you want. They're just fun little whimsical landscapes. Nothing serious about them, just have a good time. I've really been enjoying making these little landscapes for about three, four years now. There, that deepened that up really pretty. And I think I'm gonna do the same thing, get a little bit more purple on this one down here in the bottom. And just some water and I'm going to bleed it up there and then I'm going to do the same thing to this blue one here even though this is still wet I'm going to hope for the best come in with just a little bit of water I hit my purple right there. See how that's bleeding into the other hill? That's okay. It doesn't, if it really starts to bother me, I will dry it off a little bit, but right now I'm just gonna smooth it out. All right. And I think I want a little bit of blue in this hill too, just to pull in a little bit of the blue up here. Now you could have made these any colors. Um, you could even just done the whole thing in warm colors. I love cool colors, although I've got that, that pinkish red up here. That's really, really pretty. Um, I'm wondering if I should darken it up a little bit with more of a blue up on top. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna put a blue up here. Let's see how that works. There, now it just kind of made it more of a purpley color. All right, I am gonna go ahead and dry this really quick. Okay, so my painting for the most part is dry. There's still a couple little damp spots here, but I'm gonna go ahead and um, bring in my white Right now, I've got my Dr. Uh, P.H. Martin's Bombay White ink. You can use this, you can use bleed proof white, it doesn't really matter. I have a big 
tube of this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use this because I ran out of my, um, my bleed proof white. I'd run out a while ago. So I am gonna use this. All right, I'm gonna take my little liner brush and I think I'm going to, since this is still wet on this side, I'm gonna leave that alone for a little while. But I think I wanna make some trees over on this side. Actually, you know what? I think I am going to do the top of the tree first. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna to stick to a dark blue. Let's go ahead and just put in a nice round top here. You can choose any color you want. I'm just going in these little circular motions, just trying to round it out. Trees come in all shapes and sizes, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. I think that's about as far down as I'm going to go. I'll let that dry for a second. I'm going to let that dry for a second before we go in and put our um, our trunk. So I think I might make, make a few more in the back. I'm going to go down to a smaller brush here. Let's see. This is just probably a size one or two, and it's my Filbert brush. Just a generic brush. That's that's a no-name no brand brush. All right, I'm going to pull in my purple, and I think I'm going to do some trees in the background over here. They're going to be a little bit smaller because this hill is in front of this hill, so you just want to keep perspective in mind just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and make these a little bit smaller. My dogs are trying to come through the screen. Oh, they made it. Wow, here they are. Now you're gonna definitely be hearing them run around me. They just let themselves in from the backyard. Very lovely. Guess I'll have to get a new screen at some point. All right, I think I'm just gonna do two trees there. And if you want to lighten it up a little bit, I'm just gonna take a little bit of my paper towel here and just dab it while it's still wet. See how it just comes off on your paper towel? Just dab it. it gives it an extra little dimension there. So you got your light values and your dark values. I think I'm gonna do the same thing to some of this tree down here too. All right, see how that lightened it up a little bit? They almost look like little clouds right now. They're so cute. All right, I'm gonna let them dry before I give them trunks, but I'm gonna go ahead and put in a fence. So I'm gonna use my little liner brush again, my white ink, and let's put in a fence. That's yeah, dry already. Let's put in a fence this way. I'm gonna put in a fence going um, just alongside the hill here. I'm using my white. I love pops of white and black on paintings. Now just to give it a little perspective, I made my fence posts a little bit shorter in the back and a little bit longer as they come to the front. Now this hill is actually behind this hill so you don't really see where the fence is going. I guess we could make I guess we could make some posts looking a little bit smaller here because they're still gonna be starting to go down. So it would just make sense that the poles are a little bit lower because they're going down following the hill, but I'm not even gonna do that. I don't wanna confuse anything. I just want this to be a simple little painting. I'm gonna make a couple lines going this way. A couple lines going this way. I lost my little poles here, so I'm going to just give it a little top. Like that. Good. All right. That is one. Let's see if these are dry. Nope. Not yet. All right. I'm going to go ahead and start putting in some flowers or bushes or tall grass right here in the front. I'm going to go ahead and use my filbert, my small filbert. And let's go ahead and put in... I'm gonna use my Payne's Gray, and I'm just gonna be bringing in some leaves. You could do flowers, you could do leaves, you could do grass, it doesn't really matter. And I'll 
give these a little stem like that. Let's do another one. I don't think I picked up enough paint on that one. Now you can even have some just coming off right from the bottom that you don't even see any stems. It's just nice to have some from, um, you know, that some that are taller with the stem, some that are shorter, just a little variation. Maybe one that's coming in off the side here. And I think I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna just darken up this blue a little bit. I think I'm gonna take a little bit, I just want it to be deeper for some reason. I know it's really, really deep now, but I love to push my colors. I just love it. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my Payne's Gray and I'm just gonna deepen up right in here. Now this is when your painting starts coming to life. Before it was just like the hills and the sky but now you're starting to put in all your little detail. And let's see. I think I'm going to pop in a couple little, um, I'm gonna use my white again in the background. And I think I'm gonna do some white um, little pine trees. Just way back here next to these trees. Actually, you know what? They're gonna be coming down like this. I think I'm gonna put it right here, right in the middle of my hill. It doesn't always have to be on the edge of the hill. You can put them in the middle of the hill as well. So there's one. And let's do another one right next to it. Just like that. And you don't wanna put this white ink on too thick right away. You can always just build up your layers. Um, it does start to crack a little bit. If you put on like too thick at once, it does start to crack a little bit. All right, I am going to take my liner brush again. And I'm just gonna put in some taller blades of grass and they can go any which way you want. I'm gonna stay away from that little, I am gonna overlap it, but I'm just staying away from that right now because it's still wet. So I love where the light is over the dark. And you're just mixing the two. And then I think I'm gonna give it some little, um, some little dots too, almost like little flowers in the background. So let's go ahead and pull in, I'm just pulling in a small little pointer brush. And I'm just gonna be dotting it here and there. And this brush is so old, it's not making great little dots. Kind of like little, I don't know, they're just not perfect circles, which is fine. I'm gonna go ahead and just deepen up the white on some of these trees. And I think these are dry enough to pull now my, the trunks of the trees. So I'm gonna take a liner brush and I'm gonna start from the bottom, going up. And I went a little too far on that one. I didn't mean to go that far, but it's all right. Let's have another one this way. Make that trunk a little bit thicker.
and I'm going to give this one a trunk. Now this one tree is gonna be obviously thicker. Because it's closer to us. And I was gonna put a moon in this painting. Maybe I'll still do that. And you just want them all kind of veining off of each other. Okay. So you don't have to stick to just one trunk. I mean, you could just put one trunk, but then have it just kind of another little branch coming off that one, another little branch coming off that one. It's just gonna keep veining off each other. It just makes it a little bit more, I don't wanna say realistic, because this is not a realistic painting, but it does make it look a little bit more real. All right, I think I want to, let's see, is this dry? Yeah, I wanna just deepen up some of those, make them a little bit overlap this hill here. There. Let's see, uh, I think I'm gonna put some clouds in my sky. So you could have just left white space on your painting, but since I thought of it afterwards, um, what you can do is you could just take a, I'm just gonna take my little filbert brush and I'm just gonna pop in some white here and there. And I'm just being shaky about it right now. And then I'm gonna take, I've got my little Deerfoot stippler here. Um, this is a quarter inch. I'm just gonna get it a little bit wet and I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna move that ink around a little bit and you could do circular motions you can pounce it you just don't want to overwork an area because then it will start lifting up some of your paint see I don't know if you can see it's starting to lift up some of my original um, back down to my original color so just let it dry you can always do that again um, let's go ahead and put a little fence I'm gonna use black this time let's go ahead and put a little fence in the background too so I am using my black ink and my liner brush. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I did here in the front. It's gonna be behind my tree, so I'm not gonna see it there. This fence is behind my trees. All right, and then a little line. And another little line. Cute. All right. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put in, we don't really have a moon or anything, so we don't really have a light source, but I think I'm just gonna use the sky as a light source and make some shadows coming down this way. Close these up. So when you do a shadow, you just wanna kind of use pretty much the same color that the shadow is going on. So this hill would be more of a purple, dark purple, dark blue, dark aqua. Um, so that's, you just wanna kind of deepen up the color that's there already. So I'm just gonna do shadows coming out like this. So it's kind of just mimicking them. And make sure that shadow comes right up to your post or tree or whatever it is you're doing. There. And I'll do dark purple on this one. I'll have this one kind of doing the curve. This one's just doing the curve of the hill. You can make them straight down, you can make them curved. Um, if I really had like a definitive light source here, I would definitely be following along with where that light source is and just coming off that light source, but I don't. Oops, I made one where it should be. Let's see if I can get that off. Yep. All right, and then I'm gonna make those lines. And 
And the shadow again is behind these trees. Okay. Good. And I'm gonna deepen up the shadow, or I should say make a shadow on this one. And since my light is coming from this way, you just kind of want to mimic where it's coming from. And then I'm going to give it just a little bit of, it's already dark down here, but I'm going to give it a little bit more. Actually, I'm going to move to a different brush. Move to my filbert again. And just deepen it up around here. Like it's the top of the tree. It's the shadow from the top of the tree right there. And just have a good time. These are fun little exercises. They're just whimsical. They're not supposed to be, to be taken seriously. Um, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and put a little shadow. Actually, I think I will just to show you what I'm talking about. Um, I will take my black, even though my fence is white. <coughs> I will take a little liner brush, put a little shadow on these. Again, I don't have any light source, but I'm going to pull my light source from kind of this direction. So my shadows are going to be kind of almost right behind it, but a little bit more to the right. There. And then again with these lines, I'm going to give it a little bit of a shadow. I still want to see that white, but I'm going to give it a little shadow. And if you wanted to, you can make a little highlight on these guys. So you could they could both be black and white. It doesn't really matter. All right. I still think it needs a little something else over here. <laughs> Close up my inks so they don't dry out. And I think I'm going to definitely give it some stars. Oh, and I want to put in a little bit more of that sky. I mean, the clouds. Let me try that again. So I'm taking my little filbert brush. Again, I'm just going to be tapping. Oh, I have a little bit of blue on my, my brush. That's fine. And I'm going to get it a little wet. Try this a little faster this time. I'm pouncing it. cloud. Again, you could have used the white of the paper. I did not decide to do this till after. And I'm going to come in and give it a little bit more. And they're actually turning blue. I must have had a little bit of blue on this brush, but I kind of like it. It'll look like some clouds are blue and some are white. You could do some clouds down here too, but I think I'm gonna save that for the stars. Just bump right up to there. That's really pretty. And I still want something here. I think I'm going to put in some dark um, bushes. So I'm gonna take my Payne's Gray and I'm just gonna pop in some bushes right here. And they're going to be behind the tree, popping out like that. And then maybe I'll go, do I want to go all the way down my hill? Hmm. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go all the way down the hill. And they're obviously behind this fence. I'll just put a little bit there. And they're in front of this tree. Okay, and then they need a shadow as well. So let's take that turquoise again. Put a little shadow behind them. And if you want to lighten up that shadow a little bit, you can just take a little bit of water on your brush, dab it off on your paper towel, or you could just take your paper towel and just lift it a little bit. Okay. And I think I'm going to darken up these bushes a little bit more. A little bit more Payne's Gray. 
And then you know what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring in a little bit of the white and just give them a little bit of a highlight just so they stand out a little bit. Maybe more just like on the edge of them, like the, the sun is behind them or the moon is behind them and showing some light. I just feel like it wasn't popping off my page that nicely. I think this one needs a little more. Yeah, I think I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna give it a little bit more of a highlight there too. Uh, let's see, let's go in and do our stars. Okay, so I'm gonna take, um, let's see, I'm gonna take my fan brush, where's my fan brush? And I'm just gonna take a little bit, I'm just gonna kind of scoop out the rim here. I probably shouldn't be doing this over my painting. I'm just gonna scoop out the rim here and I'm just gonna put it on my palette. Let's see if I can show you really quick. These palettes are kind of heavy, nice heavy ceramic. So I'm just gonna be putting it on here and I'm gonna make kind of like a milky consistency. I'm just adding water to that ink. Okay, and then I'm gonna take another brush. Actually, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna cover up my landscape because I just want my sky. There we go. Now, of course, it's gonna get on my trees. Look how pretty that is. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your paper towel before it dries and just kind of lift it off your tree very gently because you don't want to, first of all, you want to do this when your trees are dry. And second of all, you don't want to, um, you want a dry paper towel, your trees to be dry. You just want to dab it off. If anything is wet, it will start smearing. That looks really, really pretty. I love it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and I think these are dry enough, these little bushes. Put in a little bit more of that highlight. I just want to push that highlight. I love to push my lights and my darks. To me, that's when a painting comes alive, when you start pushing your highlights and your shadows. All right. Oh, and I didn't do the shadow of those trees. Ooh, I just caught that. All right. Let me close up my white. And let me take my darker purple. And my posts are, of, are going in this direction, so so are my trees. Now this one's bleeding off the side there. And this one's coming right into my shadow right here. So I'm just gonna put a little bit more dark purple here. I don't even know if you're gonna see it once it dries. Oh, and we didn't do shadows under those little pine trees either. What am I thinking? All right, let's do that. So these are gonna be a little bit more pointy. You just wanna kind of mimic the shape. The shadow wants to mimic the shape that has the shadow. So these are gonna be a little bit more triangle, like little pine trees. And these, it was mimicking the trunk and then a little bit of the puffy part where all the leaves are up here. All right, that is really pretty. All right, I think I'm gonna dry this really quick and I might add some um, of my um, my pen to this as well. Let me see what this looks like once I dry it. Okay, so it's nice and dry. I have got my, um, my Jelly Roll number eight ink pen. And I think I'm just gonna start making some little like petals, like little, little petals down here. I just wanna break up some of this grass and some of those dots I did. You don't even need to do stems or leaves because they don't know where it's coming from. It's just kind of a mishmash. And I think I'm gonna cluster it more in the corner over here. I love when things are a little bit more clustered in the corners and then they just kind of fan out. 
Let's put a few up here. There. Perfect. That is cute. All right, let's take the tape, the tape off and see what this looks like. We can always add more if we want. That is so cute. That's really, really cute. I'm wondering if I should have added another little color in here, but I'm gonna leave it alone. I, I think it could use a little bit of green, but that's okay. This one is definitely purples and blues. I love it, perfect. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you liked it and learned a little something. And if you did like it, please give me a thumbs up and you can make a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to this video if you want more videos like this one. Hope you have a great day, bye.